Vice President Kamala Harris appearing right now with Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg amid speculation that he is being eyed as her replacement. This as high level departures at her office are intensifying with her chief spokeswoman and senior advisor Simone Sanders leaving after less than a year on the job. This as the vice president's communications team empties out with the director of press operations and the deputy director of the Office of Public Engagement both reportedly on their way out. This all comes on the heels of the vice president's communications chief who announced she was leaving last month. It's a whole lot of departures. And just moments ago, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki was asked about it. A handful of key aides have announced either that they are leaving the vice president's office or are reportedly going to be leaving the vice president's office soon. Is the vice president not satisfied with the staffing that she has had so far, or do people just not want to work for her anymore? Well, Peter, I would say that working on a presidential campaign, I may be covering one too, I would say, to be fair, and uh, working in the first year of a White House is exciting and rewarding, but it's also grueling and exhausting. It's all of those things at once. Now, Jen Psaki's not wrong about that. It is grueling. It is exhausting, Emily. Uh, but there are some extenuating factors here. There's some context that's missing. That context is Vice President Harris being one of the least popular vice presidents in history. There's been article after article about some of the discord in the office. For instance, just a few weeks ago, nearly three dozen sources telling CNN in part this. This is how they describe the environment in the office. When they're annoyed, some pass around a recent Onion story mocking Harris's lack of more substantive work, one with the headline, White House urges Kamala Harris to sit at a computer all day in case emails come through. When they're depressed in the office, they bat down the Aaron Sorkin style rumor that Biden might try to replace her by nominating her to a Supreme Court vacancy. That chatter has already reached top levels of the Biden orbit. Wow, according to one person who's heard it. Emily, this is really not surprising. She has a history of office discord. That's exactly right. She has a history that has sort of plagued her throughout her time in California as well as the campaign. Staff infighting rumors of sort of a rocky relationship between her and other parts of the White House. Now, she's argued, well, I'm not being well prepared for these positions. But when you dig down into those over 30 staffers that have had those conversations with those at CNN, they talk about specifically that they feel, quote, abandoned by her. They say there's no, quote, clear message that we can get behind. And they reference, for example, so during the campaign, they say, her family members weighed in informally and took precedence over us. We know, of course, as well that her family members had formal positions like campaign chairwoman, and there were allegations as well of mismanagement. Where did the 35 million go? And I think it, it was also hallmarked by the fact they said of a hotbed of drama and infighting with everyone pointing fingers at each other while the money drained away. And I think no matter how you put it, no matter what lens they seek to hide behind, which is, well, I'm not being prepared, I'm not being positioned accurately, the bottom line is people are leaving her team. There has been a history of infighting and factions, they say, a civil war with people choosing teams. And no matter what, it has led to her dropping out of the campaign for presidency in the beginning and now rats leaving the ship right now in the White House. That's so true. And Harris, we've talked about skill on this show and how important it is for something like vice president of the United States. Interestingly, Kamala Harris is the first vice president in decades to have a, a thinner resume than the president. So maybe she's just not equipped for the job. She blames it on not being prepared. Maybe she's not equipped. So but mm. let's start with preparation for for just a second, because we've all done things for the very first time. Try parenting. Mm -hmm. They don't yep. send you home with an instruction man. That's very true. But you know what your job is. You understand the assignment, right? <laughs> so as an AG, attorney general of a large state, California, yes, she had a team around her, but wasn't it ultimately her responsibility to prepare for a big mm -hmm. case that she would make on behalf of the people? Isn't it ultimately her responsibility to prepare for a visit south of the border or one of the many other jobs? Sometimes upon my request, they'll scroll them. There's so many that you can scroll that the president has given her. But what this is about isn't just the number of people leaving on her staff. It's the caliber of people. Simone Sanders is a big name she in is. Democrat politics. Mm -hmm. Okay, She worked for a boss, Bernie Sanders, who was not a small voice, didn't mm -hmm. dodge questions, didn't do the Biden walk away, didn't do the Kamala Harris giggle fest, didn't do that. So she steps in during the campaign at one point. She works through the first 11 months or so of the presidency and reaches a point where we've seen 
fake events with hired children mm. about space with Kamala Harris. We, we've seen crisis after crisis get nothing but a giggle, and I do like her converse hopping off those things. Those are cute, <laughs> but they're not a job skill. So all of this, it isn't just the number, it's the caliber. I mean, this is how many go-rounds has she had for her yeah. comms team? Yeah. We've been talking about this for months, people coming and going. It's a problem when the people who are supposed to be front and center, your face, if you will, of your office are leaving. It's not staff behind the scenes. Simone Sanders is a big name no matter who she works for. Yeah, and Simone Sanders, I used to spar with her on sets, being on the I other remember. side of the political aisle. She's a very talented spokesperson. Uh, it's my view the White House didn't have her out there enough. She should have been a very visible face of the Biden administration. She's very talented. But uh, moving on to this, I am fascinated by what just took place on Air Force Two. Let's roll the tape. It, it's 2021. And the whole point of campaigns and elections is when they go well, you get to govern. And uh, we, we are squarely focused on the job at hand. Uh, I'm excited to be part of a team led by the president and the vice president. And uh, I think the teamwork that got us to this point is, is really just the beginning. As transportation secretary, I get to be the face of a lot of these investments that we're doing. Uh, but we would not be here without the leadership of the vice president, as well as the president, of course, and so many others. So let me set the scene here on this. This is Air Force Two. This is on Vice President Kamala Harris's plane. She's standing there with Pete Buttigieg by her side. He's asked about the 2024 speculations. Uh, people are saying <laughs> he should be the next president. They're asked about this. And his answer was not what it should have been. It should have been full stop. I stand behind President Biden. I work for President Biden. I'm supporting President Biden. It's telling that was not the answer. Because I can tell you this, Lawrence Jones, if Alex Azar, Health and Human Services Secretary, or any other cabinet member had answered that way alongside Vice President Mike Pence, you'd have a very unhappy President Trump who would want his entire cabinet to say, we support the president because he's running. Well, that goes back to leadership. Look. Uh, not to get into the weeds here, but th th there's a bigger story than just the vice president's office. The White House is in disarray. You have two factions uh, of the Democratic Party that are literally at war with each other inside of the White House. Uh, Simone Sanders wasn't a Kamala Harris pick. Uh, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, instructed her to go over to the wing of the vice president to work in that comms department. She was known to be, uh, I spent a lot of time on, on the campaign trail, the rock of the campaign during the Joe Biden term. Uh, she worked for Bernie Sanders. She was very instrumental in securing the black vote when a lot of folks were a little iffy about Joe Biden considering the crime bill. Look, the, the president of the United States, this is his fault. Uh, he selected Kamala Harris. He knew it was going to be a disaster to begin with because the Democratic voters rejected her on the campaign. All the issues that we're highlighting right now uh, were there before he decided to select her, yet he selected her. Um, but there's, there's something deeper here. Um, it's crisis after crisis and having the fall person. You know, mm. there, Simone Sanders could be upset right now because she should be at the podium at the White House right now. Jim Psaki, Jim Psaki was not a Biden person uh, in the middle of the campaign during the primary. True. She yeah. later flipped the script after everything was said and done. And there was a lot of people that are in the White House that are upset about that. People that were day one Biden supporters that went through the struggle of his poll numbers going up and down. And when everything was said and done, he brought the Obama folks back because they needed someone to steer the ship. And that goes back to leadership. And this is why the White House is in disarray right now. I want to just piggyback, if I may, real quick off of something Lawrence just said, which is that Simone Sanders has never made a secret of her ambitions That's for right. her That's job right. at the White House. Mm -hmm. She wrote in her memoir last year, she wanted to be White House press secretary. Then just a few months ago, I think it was in the spring or over the summer, Bakari Sellers over at CNN reported she told him that she was hurt and stung when she was passed right. over for the job and Jen Psaki got it. So personal ambition is a factor here. It's nice to think that everybody who leaves the White House um, does so on some grand principle or because they disagree with the policy. Sometimes they're just normal people and their personal ambitions are frustrated. I also want to say we shouldn't undercut 
Jen Psaki when she says things like some of these folks are burned out. Kaylee, you spoke about this a moment ago. Working at yeah. the White House, I was there for five, uh, four years during two administrations. It's like dog years. You're there for one year and it mm. feels like seven. So mm. for someone like Simone Sanders, two years and then one year, that's a lot of work. You know, I mean, it's, it's easy to write that off, but it's true. Yeah, it's a great point. And, and Did you hear what Jin Saki said, though? She was on just a little while ago. We carried the White House press briefing live last hour. And the, the glowing words that she said about Simone Sanders, I, I thought that was really telling, considering the fact that she wanted that woman's job. And everybody knows it. Yeah, everyone well, does she know was, it. Well, she was secretly, guys, and everyone around Washington knows this. She was promised the job on the campaign trail. Yeah. So yeah. there's been a lot of infighting uh, to begin was. with. Yep. She was I promised yeah. a job. Yeah, that'd be upsetting for sure. And just in the way Simone Sanders was passed over, you may have Kamala Harris being passed over for Pete Buttigieg. Rumors that uh, the West Wing, his name is in a whisper campaign, a future presidential ambition. Whisper in the West Wing. Yes, exactly. <laughs>